I heard we're talking pistons today. Oh yeah. Like dual gas piston? Uh, one piston. One piston. Old school piston. Okay, a little bit more modern. More modern, okay. Classic piston driven, a little bit more modern. Yeah, keep going further modern. Okay. Bam, how's that for modern battle rifle piston driven awesomeness? Yeah, smaller caliber. Not a smaller gun, smaller caliber, okay. How's this for modern, pull up? Uh, yeah, you might've gone a little bit too far. Too far. I like the mags though, and the caliber. Okay. Proven reliable glue. Oh, no, uh, correct caliber. Talking AR-15s. Oh, you want it to have a buffer. You want to have a buffer too. Why didn't you say that? God, son of a. Let's talk about the top five piston-driven ARs. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to bring you another top five that we've got in store for you, but this time it's gonna be, well, top five piston-driven ARs. Now, before we go into too much detail, you might be thinking, well, ARs aren't piston-driven, they're direct impingement. Don't say that to the AR-180, am I right? Or uh, how about there are a lot of different piston-driven ARs that are on the market or similar styled rifles, carbines, pistols, whatever you wanna call them, uh, that you know don't need a buffer tube. So we're gonna be talking about the ones that are specifically piston-driven that need a buffer tube. You can probably see why we came up with this entire idea right here and right now, right? So let's go ahead and roll right into this. Number five, the POF 415. POF, Patriot Ordnance Factory, makes a pretty awesome rifle. In fact, a couple years ago, while we were actually at our old facility, we gave away one of the 308 models, the Revolution. So I got to spend a little bit of time on that system, and it is a pretty unique and affordable, more affordable option to get into the piston-driven game if, so you, if you choose to do that. So ultimately, what I always thought was kind of strange, or I guess interesting about the POF guns, uh, are two things. One of which, the actual piston isn't really captured. Uh, from what I could tell, at least, what you'll notice on a lot of short stroke piston driven guns like this one, the spring is actually moving kind of, or I should say the piston is moving separate, uh, not relying on the bolt to come back into its standard resting position. Usually it has a spring that keeps it captured. Uh, but you'll notice with this, it just has a piston, that once the gas comes up, knocks into the bolt, and it stays there until the bolt is pushed forward again, and then that puts it back into its resting position, ready for the next round to get shot. Thought that was kind of interesting, a pretty simple way to make that run. And then on top of that, the rail. The rail is actually integrated so much so to kind of fit over the upper receiver assembly. It's an interesting take on a monolithic design, kind of. But uh, so it's not the upper receiver and the rail themselves aren't exactly one piece of metal, but it does actually slip over the upper receiver completely, not just, you know, can't see this on camera, me taking that off, there you go. The rail doesn't just meet up to the upper receiver then tighten down around a barrel nut. It actually slides all the way over the upper receiver and also kind of raises your height over bore a little bit as well. Uh, so it makes everything, you know, slim fit finish is nice so that's kind of cool but it is just kind of a, a weird feeling guy to me whenever you hold the pof it's just a chunkier boy that's for sure but they do run pretty well and they're a lot of fun to shoot and they have complete ambidextrous controls which is something that it's it's 2023 if you're not ambidextrous you know i mean are you really trying to win in the firearms industry which is ironic enough because my number four pick doesn't have ambidextrous controls. Let's talk about that. So that brings me to our current giveaway. The HK MR556, or better known as like the, you know, 416. This does not have ambidextrous controls, nor does it have a monolithic upper receiver, but it does have a really tight, nice lockup to it. You'll actually see where the receiver, um, uh, if I, you'll actually be able to see it on the MR762 that we have over here a little bit easier except the optic is kind of blocking it some, but you can see that FDE rail locking up to the upper receiver and it kind of integrates to the upper receiver to make sure there's no twists, no turning, nothing that's gonna cause that to loosen up or anything like that. So the same type of lockup and that interface is on the MR556 rail also, which is pretty cool. But we're gonna put the MR762 back. Again, a short stroke piston driven design, which 
is inherently a pretty reliable design. Uh, it's been used for many, many decades now and is one that a lot of people really, really like. And what you'll notice too is a lot of the piston driven designs that are out there typically have, um, well, adjustable gas systems. So there's that. And a lot of people like to run suppressors with them as well, especially if they're adjustable, that is a pretty nice thing. But you will notice that, you know, on short stroke guns, that you will get still maybe a little bit more felt recoil, things like that. You probably won't get as much accuracy out of them, uh, but that's just because there's more contact with the barrel. Barrel harmonics are a thing. And on top of that, you have more of a reciprocating mass, which is something to think, take into consideration. Uh, but in a sense. But ultimately, the HKMR556 is number four on my list because well, it doesn't have amb ambidextrous controls compared to everything else on the list, but it does have a very proven track record and is a very, very reliable machine. I don't know if HK plans on releasing like a completely ambidextrous model or not. Pretty cool if they did and actually brought us quite a few things that we want. That'd be kind of nice too. But you know, SP7 for instance. Uh, but anyway, this gun right here, like I said, as our current giveaway and you know that I've had a little bit of you know time with now is a very good shooting gun. It does feel great to shoot. They're a lot of fun. And honestly, again, the legendary status that this rifle has after many decades of service internationally, uh, it's proven itself very, very much so very well. Even in the United States Marine Corps with the M27 and how they adopted that, it's just, it's a good little setup, right? So can't go wrong with it, but number four on my list because in comparison, it just doesn't offer as much as like, let's say our number three does. Which brings me to LWRCI. These guys make some pretty awesome guns and their DI lineup is like what you see right here is also a really awesome rifle just you know, for the price and everything with complete ambidextrous controls. Okay, so the LWRCI, the ICA5, that is the one that I like a lot. So that is still a short stroke piston driven gun that honestly is pretty much everything you would want. Uh, they make this rail upper receiver kind of like what POF does, except it interfaces a little bit differently. So it's not exactly monolithic, kind of like what you would expect out of the effing scar, where the rail and the upper receiver are all one piece, right? It still interfaces in a manner where you have a separate rail to the upper receiver, but the upper receiver is reinforced and actually extended. You'll notice it kind of like swells up right up to here, and then you have a, a rail that interfaces with that and locks up to it. So essentially you have a shorter rail and a longer upper receiver than what you would ha typically have on your standard AR, which is kind of cool if you ask me because, well, that interfacing, that lockup right there, right where this is reinforced, is where all the pressures are actually taking place whenever you pull the trigger and you have that small explosion that takes place with inside the gun. Well, right there kind of makes the most sense of why you'd want it to be more reinforced there. And on top of that, the ICA-5 that I'm talking about has kind of a unique looking rail to it. It is, you know, a proprietary type of attachments. It's only LWRCI stuff that you can throw on it. Uh, you can get Picatinny rails and things like that, uh, but you can at least going through LWRCI replace the rail itself. You can't, but you won't be able to buy like a Geisley or an Arrow or anything like that and throw on there. So that's one downside. But at the same time, if you get it kind of set up how you like, I mean, you know, who cares, right? If, if it runs, it works, great, cool. Not gonna complain that much about it. But we can also all recognize LWRCI from their spiral fluting on the barrels. The, again, the complete ambidextrous controls, which are some of the most intuitive that I've been able to play with. These things are just awesome. ADM also makes a really good one, but as far as I know, they're not in the piston game. Uh, so there's that, right? But really, really nice features on this and just everything about the LWRCI lineup is just, pretty freaking awesome. So there's a reason why they're number three on my list. They're a little bit more affordable than some of the ones coming up. And on top of that, available, which is nice. Still a short stroke piston driven design with the ambi controls and that mono forged design. Solid pick, I think. Well, let's talk about my number two. Primary weapon systems. PWS makes the only long stroke AR that we have on the list today, which is pretty cool. If you're kind of wondering like, okay, short stroke, long stroke, what's the difference other than you know, the strokes, uh, is ultimately take the AK operation, right? The bolt carrier and the actual piston are connected as one piece. Take that type of concept and integrate that now to the AR-15 with an adjustable gas regulator and ambidextrous controls. You've got yourself the PWS. This specifically is the Mark 116 Mod 2. 
One detractor is, you know, there are different models actually, so that's not too bad, but it does have just a ambi bolt release, not an ambi bolt catch, right? I was, I almost did a no-no there. I almost pulled the mag out because God forbid, right, YouTube? So uh, anyway, so what you'll notice is I can't lock the bolt by depressing the button here, but I can still send the bolt home by depressing said button. So. That's ridiculous. So anyway, that's how that works. The overall looks, the cost to this gun, the features that it has, again, the adjustable gas system, which is that long stroke system, is just awesome. We have had our opportunity to run the absolute crap out of these guns and they just keep working, which is a really cool thing too, because you want your gun to work. So whenever you've got all of these different features and again, a long stroke system, pretty much taking the, the reliability of the AK, throwing that into the AR, you have the ergonomics and the accuracy out of the AR. It's you know pretty freaking cool if you ask me. And again, it's just a fun gun. It really is also a different style of shooting or not style, but a different type of felt recoil compared to the other ones that we're talking about. Uh, everything else that we're talking about too is typically a little bit heavier. This one, it's pretty freaking light for what you get. The rail's nice and thin, standard lock up to the upper receiver, but you'll notice the cuts and engravings on the upper receiver and the lower just look clean, they look good. And you know, looks matter if you ask me. So really happy with the PWFs, that's why they're number two on my list. Uh, but before we talk about the number one on my list, I wanna talk about an honorable mention because these are guys that are actually relatively close to us that I just haven't really paid a whole lot of attention to because they're a little bit smaller, but I do wanna shine light on their product. Even though I don't have any experience with it, it seems like there's other people out there that do have pretty good experience with that, and that's Sword International. Sword International has been kind of renowned for making some pretty high-end firearms, ARs, and such, uh, with a short stroke piston-driven design that seem very intriguing. So that's something I just kind of want to throw out there. If you don't know who Sword International is, I advise you to look them up and let us know down in the comments. I mean, what are they, out of Greenville, South Carolina? Should we just take a trip down there one day and say, hey, show us your stuff and let's go shoot some? That sounds like we should. Anyway, let's talk about our number one. Also, just to let you guys know, PWS, they do kind of let you like have your tier of what you want to buy. So if you want complete ambidextrous controls, which also features a bolt release and a bolt catch on the right-hand side, you, you, can, you can get that. Can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Anyway, number one, even though it's kind of painful to say because I don't have one here in front of me, but I talked to these guys at SHOT Show last, you know, you know, a couple weeks ago, and you know, hopefully that changes soon. Right guys? LMT, Lewis Machine and Tool, the Mars 5.56 Piston. The uh, Mars, yeah, Piston L, because they also have a 7.62 model, which is spicy also. But there's just something about LMT that just absolutely rocks. I don't know if it's just knowing those guys over there and just how cool they are. I mean, we know PWS very well also, and just, they're just, they just make quality stuff. And on top of that, they actually have a legitimate monolithic upper receiver design. So your rail and your upper receiver are all one piece. And on top of that, you can actually choose, do you want quad rail? Do you want, you know, M-lock? Do you want it to be shorter? Do you want it to be longer? They have all these options out there, but their availability is sometimes a little tough, right? I mean, granted, I'm, have nothing in my hands. So hopefully that changes soon. Anyway, but LMT again has their Mars lowers, which that is the modular ambidextrous receiver system, which feels great. What more can I say? I mean, you gotta get your hands on one and shoot it and then start running the different controls on it. I don't think YouTube will get mad at me if I simulate throwing a mag into a gun that I don't have in my hands, which I wish I did. But again, locking the bolt back and everything else and then releasing it with, again, their controls are just super nice and they, they, they work really well. So uh, I've run a couple of LMT guns and I'm looking forward to run even more, of course. So LMT, if you're watching, hi, don't forget about us. We'd love to come into your facility sometime and shoot a lot of your guns and possibly give away something. I don't know, probably with Huxworks also. So anyway, let us know what you guys think about that down in the comments section or maybe LMT's own silencer that they got coming out there. You know, we talked about that at SHOT Show too. So Nick, if you're watching, hey dude. So, all right, we'll leave it off there though. That's our list. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Are there some other buffer needing AR piston types out there that uh, you think should be on the list that weren't? Um, just let me know. Do you think maybe the 
organization of what goes where should be switched up some? Do you think that the MR556 should be number one? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And while we're talking about the MR556, why don't you just head on over to cfcontest.com or classicfirearms.com. Utilize the code word <laughs> rumble to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries because YouTube hates us. Uh, but that's okay. You guys don't. We hope. So anyway, the MR556A1 that you see right here is coming with the BCM vertical grip. We've got the shorty, uh, the shorty Surefire Scout Light. This is the more compact model, which again, I just think kind of looks good with the gun and how it flows. We do have the pressure pad sitting right up top that does have your momentary and constant on, which is a nice little feature to have. Coming back a little bit further, we got the Night Force Attacker on a Scalarworks mount. That is a one to eight first focal plane optic that just is awesome, it, it, I, I am a huge fan. Coming back a little bit further, you'll notice the MOE SL Plus grip, and then we've got the Tech 10 sling, which again, I'm a really big fan of also, works really, really well. And one of our green Lancer mags that you guys uh, seem to like still. So yeah, we'll throw that in there, why the heck not, right? Anyway, I think I pretty much covered it there. We've already talked a little bit about it in this video. And if you wanna learn more about it and see our video announcing this as our giveaway, well, head on over to Rumble to check that out because we, pretty much build the gun, um, accessorize the gun, kit it out uh, right here and on camera and YouTube would not show me installing this or that or this or that or this or even putting the mag in. So rumble is the code word to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries, but don't forget referring your friends and family is the number one way to get the most amount of entries through one entry method. So again, see you guys down in the comments section all about piston driven ARs with a buffer tube and whether or not you think this list stacks up to yours. Let me know. God bless guys and we'll see you soon.